let's start very quickly with fantasy and not just any fantasy, but the fundamental fantasy. And it's simple. The fundamental fantasy is this, the other exists. And here I mean the big other, capital O other in our English. The fundamental fantasy to be traversed in analysis, we learned in seminar 11, here in 14, Lacan tells us in so many words, the fundamental fantasy is that the other exists. Now, what do I mean by this other, this big other that we fantasize about? Mark you down there. Um, hey, Philip, how's it going? Your mic is on. Oh, sorry about that. No worries. Welcome to the mix, my man. Thank you. Yeah. So the fundamental fantasy is that the other exists. And here, the other, the big other in question is this, um, this other that we fancy as whole, as complete, as full, as united, as one. Think in the sense of oneness, united as one, e pluribus unum, as they used to say. Here is this totalizing treasure trove of meanings, answers, laws, orders, every word in the dictionary, every word in a language in a dictionary. What we're talking about here is a universe. At the early, in the early parts of 14, Lacan is using this word universe. And what he means by this is a, a, a I hate to say world because the universe is more than that, but it's a world where everything is brought together and fused into one, a universe. And uh, here we fancy the big other as this universe. Um, in other words, that the other is not castrated like the rest of us that it's not lacking like the rest of us, that it's not barred like the rest of us. When I say the fundamental fantasy is that the other exists, this is what I mean. Lacan's point throughout seminar 14 is that this fantasy is false. The other is always already logically, structurally, necessarily barred, split, incomplete, castrated. This is part of the work that we've been doing in the first two sessions of this series on the logic of fantasy. In other words, here's the truth. If the fundamental fantasy is that the other exists, the truth is that it don't. In other words, the other does not exist. This is Lacan's point. Why not? Why doesn't the big other as whole as a universe of discourse, laws, meanings. Feel me on the symbolic here. It doesn't exist for the same reason that there's no other of the other and no meta language either. These are two popular bumper sticker approaches, phrases that have come about where Lacan is making pretty much the same point. If there is no other than the to, to the other, it, is, it means that the big other lacks a big other. In other words, that it's lacking. There's no meta language because there's no way that you could talk about language that would not itself involve the use of language. No way of talking about language apart from language. There's no meta language. There's no outside discourse. Um, this would also be um, part and parcel of what made Derrida famous. And Lacan and Derrida have had a kind of tangled history um, from, uh, from Hopkins forward and maybe even a little bit around that period. Um, but we can get into that later if we need to. But this idea that there is no outside text, Derrida made famous, um, is closely related to what Lacan is doing here when he says there's no meta language. Um, and here's how we arrived at that. In the simplest, most logical sense, containers are not among their contents. The bag that holds a bunch of dicks is not itself a dick included in the bag of dicks. Um, this is especially true 
even and especially true when containers purport to be totalizing containers, containers that purport to contain every entity of a certain kind, whether it's the dictionary that purports to contain every word in a given language, or the symbolic, or the big other, these treasure troves. Um, the more treasure trovey a container purports to be, the more we can rest assured that it will, in fact, be a leaky container, a bag in which the dicks can't help but slip out. We arrived at this by saying that it's only by leaving something out that the big other as a totalizing operation can ensure its count is legit and complete. And this was the tricky thing. Wait a minute, you're telling me that it's only by leaving something out that the totalizing, universalizing count of the big other can be complete? Yes, but here's how we arrived at that. The something which is always left out as a guarantee that the symbolics count or the state's count is complete is always nothing relative to that count. Nothing has been left out of a complete count. If everything is included, it means that nothing has been excluded. Now, usually we hear that as saying, oh, that just means it's all here. Lacan's point, though, is that no, the something which is nothing that has to be excluded in order for your claims of totalization to hold water is an entity to be studied and thought. And this is kind of like mind-blowing for folks because we oftentimes approach thought at the level of ontology. A question of what is. Psychoanalysis, though, is really good at thinking the other question here. Not what is, but what ain't. Emphasis on that lowercase a in ain't. What is not here? The ontology of psychoanalysis, you often hear me say, is a mayontology. It's not a study of being, it's a study of non-being, which is why Lacan's ears are so well tuned in to this something which is nothing that guarantees the completion of the big other's totalizing count. If everything is included, nothing has been excluded. Nothing has been left out. Nothing has been left behind. And Lacan, as a thinker, wants to turn around and go pick it up, check it out, see what the hell this nothing, in fact, is. 